Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. But as you might see, uh, things are a bit different today. Uh, ben cannot join us. Uh, he's just busy with class. But today I have a good friend of mine, Mason. Mason, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, you're a big Cardinals fan, as the people can probably see. Yeah. So uh, you also have a podcast of your own. So tell us a bit about that and if people want to check it out. Um, so me and my two friends run a podcast called TMS Takes. Um, we don't really have a strict schedule, but we do post every now and then. Um, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And uh, it's just us basically doing what Tanner does, just talking about football, dabble a little bit into basketball. And uh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I saw a bit of it's pretty good. So anyways, today we'll be talking about the Cardinals. And as the time of uploading this, a uh, wild card weekend's coming up and the Cardinals will not be a part of it. They lost week 17 to the Rams going eight and eight. Uh, a very disappointing season for me because I had the Cardinals going, I think like 10, 11 wins. I actually had them winning the NFC West. I thought the Niners would fall off, which they did, but that was injury. I did not expect the Rams to do as well as they did, and I thought the Cardinals could beat the Seahawks. I just really liked their offense, and I think at times it didn't come together. So I had them about 10, 11 wins, especially with the DeAndre Hopkins trade, but I was pretty high on them before that. So, Mason, if you want to talk about how you thought they did before the season, kind of your predictions. Um, honestly, my predictions weren't too far off. I definitely had us making the playoffs. Um, I thought we were going to be like a nine to 10 win team, but definitely getting into the wild card. I was, I was going to be pretty disappointed. Like I am if we didn't make playoffs because that DeAndre Hopkins trade just elevated Kyler as like it showed throughout the year. Kyler improved. Um, the coaches had another year under their belt, which I really thought was going to bring this team to the next level because this is Cliff's second year. So, like, the first year, like, as a head coach, it's going to be pretty difficult. So, I thought he'd get all the kinks out. So, I thought they'd be, like, nine, nine, ten wins, like a six seed, seven seed, something like that. Yeah, same here. Um, so, there's a lot to talk about with this team. I guess we can talk about your favorite part, the coaching. Um, <laughs> um, with Cliff Kingsbury, uh, where do you stand on him? I guess we can start at the top and then go to the bottom. Um, with Cliff, I think – I do think he, he deserves another year. I, sometimes I get really, like, mad at him just because, like, he does some really questionable things. But I think this year um, he needs to hire an offensive coordinator. It's just, like, it's very hard when he's the only one doing all the offensive management. And uh, he really just needs to focus on giving input instead of calling plays. So I like Cliff. I like – I kind of like some of his schemes, but I definitely think he needs to – um, subtract play calling from his duties. Yeah, I agree. I think also his personality is not my favorite. He's a very calm person, which yeah. is great, but there's been a lot of times this season with the Cardinals, like thinking of the Patriots, Panthers, and Lions games, those were very close losses that the Cardinals had, and I feel like under a different coach, if they had more motivation, maybe they win in at least one or two of those, but I, I just don't think he's really using the system well. He has just a lot of trouble running the ball. At least that's what I see. I don't know if you want to speak more on that, but I feel like the running game is either like too much or not enough. I've hardly seen any in between. Um, yeah, Cliff, like he, he has some good run schemes, but um, I feel like it's 50-50. I feel like 50 on Kenyon Drake. I don't know what happened. He just doesn't seem to have that burst he did last year when he was just like doing amazing for us. But also it comes to, like, the schemes that Cliff, like, runs up. Like, he'll just run up the middle two plays in a row then have Kyler have to throw in third and eight and something like that. He doesn't really mix it very well. He kind of, like, commits to the run. Or like you said, he just, like, he doesn't have a good balance of when to run the ball and when to not run the ball. Yeah, Kenyon's going to be a free agent this year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have seen a lot of good things from Chase Edmonds. I think he could be the feature back because when he first got taken, I thought he was going to be more of a rotational third down guy, but he's looked pretty good. I just don't value running back that high. So, I mean, the Colonels could get like a third, fourth round running back. 
and I think be satisfied, and at least in my opinion. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I don't trust Kenyon Drake to give him a long-term deal. I'm really glad we didn't do that this past offseason. We only gave him a one-year proven deal. And, uh, yeah, I love Chase Evans. Like, every time you just watch him run the ball, it's like he's very hard to tackle. He keeps his legs moving. He's always getting, like, one or two extra yards. He just, like, plays with a lot of heart. And, like, I love Chase Evans so much. I wish, like, he was included more in the offense because I feel like I feel like the run game would have been a lot better if Kenyon and uh, Chase, like, split carries. But it was more like Kenyon 70%, Chase 30%. Yeah, we definitely in the NFL see a lot of different – and running schemes like you have the titans and vikings that have run running back or a team like the ravens that have multiple um talking kind of about usage we'll go to the wide receiver position uh you know obviously hopkins is fantastic you're wearing his jersey yep. um larry we'll see if he is here next year or not even if he is, I still think they could use another decent wide receiver. I like Andy Isabel a lot, but he just seems to go fast. You need more than that. And Christian Kirk is really inconsistent. I feel like he either makes – he had that one Patriots drop, which I'm sure he didn't want to get reminded of. But then he also has, like, some fantastic plays. So, and I think the Cardinals could use another – like, not top tier, but just, like, a decent wide receiver, like, isn't Kenny Stills in free agency? I think he got cut by the Texans. Um, the Bills just signed him for their playoff run, I think. Oh, they did? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So, <laughs> anyways, what are your thoughts on the Cardinals wide receivers? Um, yeah, wide receivers, I really was, like, disappointed on about everyone besides uh, D-Hop. Like, D-Hop, he did what he was supposed to do, just top three in receiving yards, absolute beast. You know, you throw it up to him, he's going to catch it 90% of the time. Um, I like Christian Kirk, but I definitely don't think he's going to be the number two when Larry retires, which probably could be this year. Um, a lot of like people, like uh, a lot of Cardinals fans, including me, um, we really want Marvin Jones. He's a free agent this year, and he's not like that superstar wide receiver, but he's like another guy that will take attention off D Hop, and like it's just another good pass catcher. And I think Kirk will really like thrive as a slot guy more than like an outside guy. Marvin Jones would be nice. Yeah. That would be a good oh, – because he's jump ball too, so you could have him and Hopkins. I would – I like that. I didn't think of that. Um, yeah, I think Kirk would work well as a slot receiver. Um, a position that's impressing on the Cardinals, not many, but a couple. Um, first one being tight end. I thought Dan Arnold really stepped up. Um, I think he's good. And then Cal Murray, I thought, had a really great season. He had some misses, but for year two, I was dressed by him. Um, you know, I, I like everything about Kyler. I think he processes the field well. He has a beautiful throwing motion. like very fast. I think you can see a lot of those MLB baseball mechanics paying off. But I just wanted to know your thoughts with Kyler this year, how you thought he did, and so on. Um, Kyler, yeah, he really impressed me. Like, I'm the biggest supporter of Kyler Murray you'll ever find, like, I'll defend him, like, tooth and nail. Um, but I will admit, like, there were some games, like the Lions game, he was just, like, really bad. But then he bounced back in the middle of the year, and he just, like, had a very, like, good year. I mean, last year he didn't really, like, run the ball as much as he did this year. And, like, when he ran the ball this year, it just, like, opened, like, the offense so much better. And which is why, like, um, the Cardinals finished second in yards per game is just because Kyler took that step next level step uh, running and if he takes that next level passing next year he's just going to put it all together I think he's just going to be an, an MVP uh, caliber player next year yeah um this is an interesting topic because Kyler started out kind of playing like an MVP he had a lot of great games like the Niners Jets Cowboys the Bills with the Hale Murray but then he kind of trailed off like I said consistency is a huge issue with the Cardinals if Cliff's here next year, just him, no OC, do you think Kylo, Kyler will elevate his game at all, or do you think he'll be stuck with this season? I honestly think Kyler will improve a little bit, but I honestly think that Cliff kind of gets bailed out by Kyler a lot, and he kind of holds Kyler back to an extent. So I do think he'll improve, but I don't think he'll take as big of a jump if Cliff is still here. But if he hires an offensive coordinator and that coordinator just like knows how to – not only use Kyler, but, like, the whole offense to, like, 
because that's the problem was Cliff was trying too hard to make it the Kyler show instead of like everyone's like it's it's a whole offense not just one person so I think that if we don't get an offensive coordinator definitely won't, won't be as big of a jump as it was this year yeah that's a good, good point look at teams like the Chiefs Packers Bills Ravens they use everyone with the Cardinals I feel like yeah you said it's the Kyler show um I do think, though, that him and Hopkins look fantastic, and that's kind of the one main thing you want to see as a fan, just that chemistry. Um, what do you think of the offensive line? Because I know the Cardinals and offensive line have always struggled. I thought they looked better this year from what I saw. Not as bad, but still not great. I would definitely say um, this year they're middle of the pack as far as offensive lines. They definitely made an improvement from last year. Last year they were atrocious. Um, left tackle, uh, DJ Humphreys, we signed him to an extension. He's been an amazing left tackle for us this year. He's, like, allowed, like, three sacks maybe this year, something like that. He's one of the highest pass-blocking win rates, um, according to Pro Football Focus. And, uh, no, the offensive line's not terrible. Um, the big thing that, like, killed the offensive line was there were so many penalties. Like, I can't even remember, like, there's, like, two false starts, like, every drive, it seemed like. I, I was just watching. I was like, oh, we got a nice drive put together. And then Justin Pugh will have a false start or a holding, and it just holds everyone back. Um, but the tackles, so Kelvin Beecham and Humphreys, they did a fantastic job, like, pass blocking. But the interior, they just didn't help out, like, the running game at all this year, it seemed like. Like, they were just getting destroyed. Like, like last week, Mason Cole, our center, he got – like Aaron Donald, the first play just ran him over. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my gosh. But no, I definitely like a, our tackle situation, but we definitely need like interior offensive line help. Yeah. Um, you know, Aaron Donald does that to a lot of people, but I get yeah. the point. I didn't know that Kelvin Beecham was on the Cardinals. That's, was he oh, yeah. on another team before? He was on the. Jets for a point, maybe the Panthers, but he's actually been. I feel like he's a Pro Bowl snub because according to he has the what's it called the second highest blocking win rate and the first run blocking win rate. So he's one, been one of the best right tackles this year, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, I I haven't seen that much. I don't really. Why well, I, I watch a lot of Cardinals games. They had a lot of prime time games, which was neat. But I just. I'm not an offensive line guy. I just – it's kind of like whatever to me. Yeah. Um, ben and I have talked a lot about this. I feel like there's more bad offensive lines in the NFL than good ones. So, I'm wondering if AZ should go uh, O-line with their first-round pick or what do you want to do them with that first-round pick? Because they're in the middle. Do you want O-line? I'm trying to think of other positions of need corner. We haven't talked about the defense, but Patrick Pearson's on another team. Could see that. Uh, edge rusher, I, I'm just curious where you want them to go. Um, honestly, I pick 16. I don't think there will be a good offensive lineman to take. And usually taking offensive lineman, unless it's like a Quentin Nelson, where that's just like a next generational talent, that guy is not going to be good for a couple years. Kind of like Humphreys, we took him in the first round, but he took a couple years to develop into a solid tackle. But uh, at pick 16, if there's a guy like Jalen Waddle, Kyle Pitts, like another playmaker to – Go go around uh, D Hop. That would be great. Um, cornerback. That would be amazing. Like J C Horn, his favorite player of all time is Pat Pete, and he like he loves the Cardinals. So that would be like a dream come true for him. And he's like a beast. Um, I wouldn't mind edge rusher, as long as like it's a defensive line because I think our outside linebackers are pretty like safe right now. But no, anyone to like help in the secondary or like another pass catching threat would be amazing. Yeah, um, I like that Kyle Pitts pick because I think he could fall because the top of the draft is probably going to be quarterbacks and wide receivers. I could see him falling. Also, Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher I could see. Um, yeah, it just kind of depends. I think the middle of the draft is the hardest, but I, I like the Jalen Waddle idea. Um, let's jump to the defense. So you have a lot of issues with Cliff Kingsbury. I have a lot of issues with Vince Joseph. When he first got hired, I thought that was a pretty bad move. And I don't know. The defense is so inconsistent because there's people like Buda Baker, who is fantastic this year. Byron Murphy's been so nice. But then you have people like Isaiah Simmons, who were just so underutilized. That was just 
I think uh, it was just a terrible way they used Simmons. I loved Simmons coming out of Clemson. He was one of my favorite players, and he just hardly did anything. He had, like, one pick against the Seahawks, and I feel like that was it. So what's your thoughts on the defense and Simmons and all that? Um, yeah, I definitely think – so Vance Joseph last year was definitely bad, but he, I feel like he was our best coach this year, in my opinion, just because, I mean, Cliff wasn't that impressive. Not, neither of them were that impressive, in my opinion, but I do think Vance was better at it too. But Vance, like, I don't know what his problem was with Simmons, but, like, I feel like every time Simmons was in the game, he was just making plays, but, like, he was barely in the game. Like, so the first Seahawks game, he got that pick that won us the game. The second Seahawks game, he had, like, ten tackles, two sacks. And then the Rams game, I don't know if you saw, but the Rams were driving down there on the one-yard line, and Isaiah Simmons comes in for one play and punches the ball out, and we recover it. And it's just like you have a guy – he's a rookie. He's going to make mistakes. But uh, Vance was like, oh, he's a rookie. I can't. He's going to make too many mistakes. But it's like you can't not play him because you got to get those he, – he, like a players get better by playing, if that makes sense. Like you're not going to get better watching from the sideline. Like, you're, there's going to be an extent to where you can't just watch. You have to actually play. Um, I feel like our defense, like you said, is extremely inconsistent. Uh, I feel like that happened as soon as Chandler Jones went down. Like, it's just – it was a nightmare, like, pass rush-wise. Like, one game, Hassan Reddick would just be amazing. Then the next game, like, if Hassan, if Hassan Reddick couldn't get pressure, no one could. It was just, like – it was just a nightmare, like, inconsistent. Like, one week – the the Cardinals defense would allow like one touchdown, then the next week Russell Wilson's dropping forty on us, you know. Yeah, um going off the Isaiah Simmons thing, I think that does the issue go higher than this? Maybe Joseph because for me it's like I agree playing the rookie, like look at Josh Allen, his rookie year was very rocky, but he played. So maybe Joseph wasn't a fan of the pick, but how much input did he have? I just find it so bizarre that they got Simmons and he hardly played. I think that's a huge disappointment. Um, I, I, I didn't even see that Rams play, but that was great. Um, yeah, I think the Cardinals defense as a whole, they need I, – I, Chandler Jones is great, but he's up there in his 30s, so I don't know if he's long-term. Um Looking at the team, trying to do like a, just a mental map of it, Byron Murphy's good, but you need another corner opposite of him. I feel like Patrick Pearson started the season strong but went down. Um, Buda Baker's great. I'm trying to think on the edge. Zach Allen I know has some potential. Uh, Hassan Reddick is nice, but I don't think he's anything great. Like he's a good rotational player. Like, okay, put him in. He can get some nice – pressure but I don't think he should be a starter um I'm interested to see what you think of Jordan Hicks because I know a lot of Cardinals fans don't like him but it seems like he's always making big plays so I'm just interested to see what you think of Hicks and kind of I've heard his coverage is pretty bad so I kind of see that but yeah so you're you're an Eagles fan so used to be a former Eagles uh if I remember correctly um, he won that Super Bowl with you guys. I remember that. I was like, I actually like the pickup, like when we got him last year. Um, he's um, fantastic in like run stopping. Like he he'll just get in there and put his nose in. He'll make the tackle. Um, his pass coverage is pretty bad, but like I feel like that's not his fault because Vance will like like last week Vance put him on a wide receiver, and I was like, what are you doing, Vance? Like it's it's like a man coverage, and Hicks is on their one of their fastest receivers. I'm like. Okay, like Hicks is not good in coverage, but Vance knows the strengths and weaknesses of every player. He sees him every day. Um, but, you know, Hicks, like, he's really good at play recognition. I feel like he's a great leader for our defense, honestly. Like, he has a voice and he's a good captain. Um, his pass coverage is definitely lacking. But then again, like, he's not a perfect player, and Vance just really doesn't know how to use his players at times. Yeah, my mom's a big Cardinals fan, and she mentions about Jordan Hicks's leadership, and that's a great trait. I just, I don't get why Vance Joseph is still on the team. Being honest, I feel like he just uses his players so bad. The Cardinals seem like a very, it's so interesting because we'll transition. I mean, we can mention special teams, but Zane Gonzalez is terrible. Um, I heard the punter was good, so I guess there's that. But um, you know, because like a couple years ago. They fired, fired Steve Wilkes after one year, and they traded Rosen. 
So I thought, oh, they're getting a lot more strict, which is good in today's NFL. But now it seems like they're very lenient, at least with Vance Joseph. Cliff, he's a new coach, okay, but with Vance, it's like he was bad with the Broncos. Why is he not gone yet? So I'm just very surprised um, with that. I do feel like the Cardinals um, front office is getting better because they did make the Hopkins trade, and I thought the draft was good, but – where do you stand on their front office? Um, yeah, so like two years ago, three years ago, Steve Kahn, I was like, dude, why are you still here? But like, I don't know what clicked in his head, but all I know is out of the 32 GMs in the NFL, Kahn might be the only crazy guy to draft two quarterbacks in the first round back to back and it actually working out in favor of the franchise. And, um, he ended up signing David Johnson to that massive extension that was just killing our cap space. And he ended up relieving that cap space and bringing in an amazing wide receiver. So now like Kime, I'm really, I really like him. I wish he would uh, like do better in free agency because in free agency, he kind of gets like mid tier guys, not that superstar guy, but like one day I just want him to go get like just a superstar guy. And I understand why he doesn't. Cause like sometimes teams overpay for players in free agency and like, he kind of really doesn't do that, but like Marvin Jones, he's kind of a mid-tier player, but I definitely want him to just like, just go after him. Players like that, you know, just can, that can elevate the team even more. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. I do think, I don't know if he's on the market, but JJ Watt would be, I think a nice move. I hope JJ Watt goes to another team. Stefan Gilmore. I know Cardinals fans want him. That would be a great addition. Here's a crazy thought I had while we're recording this. What if, uh, hear me out, if the Cardinals hired Bill O'Brien as an offensive coordinator? Because he has uh, experience with Hopkins. You can say a lot about Bill O'Brien, but he made Deshaun Watson pretty good. Kyler is similar to Watson, so I could see it happening. I also couldn't. I feel like the Cardinals are going with Cliff. But that would just be an interesting move. That just popped into my head. Bill O'Brien to the Cardinals as an OC. Because Bill O'Brien, I think, yes, his offseason moves are mostly bad. But as a coach, I don't think he's that bad. I think he's actually pretty decent. Yeah. Um, Bill O'Brien as an offensive coordinator definitely wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Like, there's like, honestly, I just want Cliff to get someone in there to help him out. And if Bill O'Brien's that guy, we'll just see what he's got. Um, I don't know if it would happen, though, because him and Hopkins have a pretty like bad relationship now after what happened um, but honestly like bill o'brien i feel like he does get a lot of hate for his front like just don't touch the front office bill and you're good you can come over here you know like just <laughs> just don't make any trades please we're good <laughs> and I, I wouldn't mind him yeah that would be a interesting move okay mason so before we move on from this season what are some of your favorite and least favorite games um for me um, even though they lost, I thought the Dolphins Cardinals game was pretty good. That was the week after the Bills, so people still on that hype. I'll leave that game for you to talk about since you're the Cardinals fan here. But I thought the Dolphins game, at least for me, it was a very close game. Ultimately, the kicker kind of cost the Cardinals, but the Bills game I thought was great. I, I'll uh, hand the mic to you because I know you probably have a lot of thoughts to, to say about the flow game oh yeah 100 percent. that that bills game was definitely probably my favorite um like the beginning of the game it was 23 to 9 or not beginning but like third quarter of the game was like 23 to 9 kenny and drake just fumbled cole beasley got a touchdown cliff is just not knowing what to do and i'm like oh boy here we go another loss for us but then some reason kyler or cliff starts calling up these plays and kyler's running for 20 yards and then he gets another rushing touchdown then the defense gets a uh, um, a stop. It was a stop, yeah. So Josh Allen threw a pick to, I believe it was Patrick Peterson, and Patrick Peterson dropped like two picks that game. So it was just like, oh, my gosh, Pat P finally got that pick. And then we got another drive going, and then Kyler scored another rushing touchdown. And then it was just back and forth. And then we were up 23 to 26, I believe. And then I was like, okay, guys, just hold them a field goal. Let's go to overtime. That's the worst we can do. And then Josh Allen sitting in that pocket and he fires it to Stephon Diggs. And like, are you kidding me, man? Like this is, we're going to go through this again. So there's like, what, 20 seconds left. I'm like, oh my gosh, we need a miracle. 
it's like a couple plays. We have a play to Larry. He goes out of bounds. It's like 11 seconds left. I'm like, all right, here we go. And then Kyler's rolls out of the pocket. It looks like he's about to get sacked. He escapes it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And he throws it up. I'm like, no way. And then I, I, I swear, I literally saw DeAndre Hopkins' like hands go up like this. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. He, before he even caught him, like, he's going to get it. He comes down. I'm like, the ball didn't hit the ground. I was just, like, going crazy. That was, like, that was by far the best Cardinals, like, probably top three Cardinals play I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, like we're just watching that in real time. Like, my family was going crazy. I was like, there's this can't be real. Like, that's just, like, a one in a million chance to happen. It was just amazing. Yeah. Um, for me, that was a fantastic moment. And um, you summed it up super well. I thought even before the, the Hail Mary, that drive that Kyler had was super impressive going down the field. Even though the Cardinals did not make the playoffs, it was still nice to see them have those big wins, like the Bills, the Cowboys prime time game, I thought was excellent. Um, they just destroyed that team as an Eagles fan. I was like, yes. <laughs> Even the um, eagles Cardinals game, as an Eagles fan, I thought it was a great game by both teams. So the Cardinals, I thought it had a more exciting season. Probably one of the more exciting ones since 2015. Going into next year, we'll see. Um, they play the AFC South and the NFC North, so it's going to be tough. But I really think it depends on the coaching. I think that's either going to make or break. And I think if they don't make the playoffs, we'll see the coaching staff go away. So what's your thoughts on next season here, Mason, before we wrap things up? Um, I'm pretty excited for uh, next season. Um, it's, just, it's the first year with the 17-game schedule, so that should be pretty interesting. Uh, we get Kyler versus Baker rematch. Um, the game I'm most excited for is D-Hop and the Tex- against the Texans again. I'm, I feel like he's just going to want to – drop 500 yards receiving and just do some crazy stuff. Um, but no, like in general, I really think next season we're going to, as long as injuries don't hassle us, like the, they hassled the 49ers. I think we could sneak in the wild card, maybe go into a divisional round game. I don't know. I feel like this team has a lot of potential, but like you said, it, we have the talent. We have all the talent in the world. It comes down to coaching I mean, for example, Cardinals had the most penalties this year. Um, you're not going to make the playoffs with the most penalties in the league. It's just you need discipline, and that comes from coaching. That comes from players, and I, I really feel like Cliff just needs to take the, that next level. And if he doesn't make the playoffs, there's no doubt in my mind he's gone because with Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins, if you don't make playoffs, it's like you're, you're failing as a coach, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the Cardinals are headed in the right direction, but the road is just very bumpy. Also, I didn't know the Cardinals made the Browns, but – oh, is that the 17th game? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that 17th game thing is weird. I don't like it, but another game of football, I won't complain. Yeah, the Cardinals will see. The NFC West is very unpredictable, and we, we can jump into that here. Niners, I don't know what they're doing with Jimmy Garoppolo. I think they'll keep him. It will shock me if they don't. Rams, we'll see where that goes. I like them this year, but you never know. And then the Seahawks are always great. So the NFC West is getting tougher. Um, so I don't know about the division title, but we'll see what the rest of the NFC. If Drew Brees retires, I don't know about the Saints. You know, what happens to the Falcons? The NFC East is very interesting. <laughs> so um, I, I think that there's a lot of, spots opening up i think that we've seen in the nfl that young quarterbacks have to hit that big year josh allen was this year last year's lamar jackson the year before that mahomes the year before that carson Wentz. Wentz didn't really work out so much but but you know i think it's (laughs) it's good for those young quarterbacks to have those turning points and if kyle doesn't hit his next season I think he'll hit eventually. I just don't know if he'll be with this coaching staff of the Cardinals. Do you think there's any issues besides the coaching staff? Because that's, I, we've talked about that a lot. I'm just interested to see if there's any other things. Um, if you're talking about like player wise, yeah, I definitely, I definitely don't like Drake Kirkpatrick. Um, he's he's okay at best. He gets burned a lot. It's not only that, but his character is kind of an issue. Like. 
for example, that Seahawks Thursday night football game, like we're already struggling because Kyler's arm is he has a, a AC joint sprain, which is very hard to throw on. So it's already going to be a tough game to win. And you're playing Russell Wilson in prime time. It's like there's no room for error. And we stop him on third down. They're about to punt. And then Drake Kirkpatrick just has to start talking, picks a fight with DK Metcalf, 15 yard penalty. Seahawks go down, score a touchdown. Like it's just little stuff like that. That, like like on my team I mean I can tolerate it if you're like a DeAndre Hopkins level player but you're Drake or Patrick you shouldn't be talking to DK Metcalf like that it's just it's just not acceptable um other issues on the team I definitely say uh defensive line has always been an issue for the Cardinals ever since Clayus Campbell has left um it just we haven't had that superstar guy on the front besides like Chandler Jones who's a linebacker step up so I definitely feel like we either need to go for someone in uh, free agency or maybe trade for someone like J.J. Watt, like you said earlier. Um, funny enough, trade deadline, the Cardinals were trying to get J.J. Watt, but Texans were not willing to trade him to us, probably for a good reason. But <laughs> <laughs> We like we did this before it did not turn out good. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, honestly, just like, just small stuff like that. Um, but you're, you're never going to be perfect with all the players, but I definitely feel like if we could upgrade those two areas, um, especially the corner position, because Byron, I love Byron, but we definitely need someone to pair him up with uh, Pat Pete and him, because I definitely want to keep Pat Pete, because I don't think there's an upgrade out there. Maybe Richard Sherman, but he doesn't really fit our scheme at all. He's more of a zone guy. Cardinals run a lot of man. So, uh, yeah, I feel like corner is a, definitely a – big need that we should address either trade literally any way we can yeah the Cardinals are in a weird spot where I feel like it's the old Cardinals and the new coming together and I just think it's going to take time and transition um you brought up a lot of good points today Mason is there anything else you want to say before we end this episode no it's just been uh it's been a really fun to talk about the Cardinals though even though it's been disappointing to you <laughs> but yeah it's been it's been fun well, I hope this has helped. Um, until next time, thank you all for watching. Take care and have a good day. Bye, everyone.